What is up, everybody? I hope everybody's good. I hope everybody's well. I hope uh, lockdown hasn't been too difficult for everybody. I know all over the world's a bit different. Um, we're under quite strict lockdown in South Africa, but um, we're going to try to keep content coming. Um, I have got a whole bunch of stuff planned and um, I have been filming stuff. It's just trying to get it out. It's a bit tricky. Before we get started, I want to try something new and ask you to subscribe and like and click the bell um, right in the beginning of the video because it seems to be, it, it works a bit better for everybody if you do it in the beginning. Um, so please do subscribe and like and please hit me with a comment. I try and help if I can and uh, I try to reply to everybody. So I really appreciate the, the feedback from you guys. Um, today's video, we are going to talk about my Wacom tablet, which is this one. So this is the the, the new new ish into it. I think there's a new one in this. Um, this is this is the one I bought about two years ago. It's when they just went from um, the bamboo model to this one. So there's no more bamboo model. Um, the reason I chose this one is because it's small. So this is actually bigger than what I need. Um, but this works really well for me. I know there's a bigger pro version which um, is very good for people who sketch. Sorry, looks out of focus. It looks, um, it works very well for people who sketch doing big motion. So even this is too big for me. If you can, I don't know if you can see, I do have another video of this. Focus. So I don't know if you can see over here, see that worn area? That's all I use. So I don't use any, you can see this is still brand new. Um, I don't use anything else other than that little area and sometimes the buttons. So, I mean, yeah, this is too big for me, but this is the smallest, uh, unless you get a signature pad, this is as small as they go. And then they work with these uh, pens. Let me get full focused. So they work with these pens. Yeah, they work with these. And um, you use these to retouch with. So um, they work really well for uh, like dodging and burning and stuff where you, you kind of manually clicking a lot. So a mouse, you got a clicking, click, 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 click. It's really annoying to try and edit like that. So we use these. And um, today I just want to show you some tips and tricks on how I set up mine. So um, things are changing the menus and uh, setting up this area. So you only use that space and the Wi-Fi module and so on. So um, we're going to go through the steps. I'm going to play over some B-roll and just random stuff. I've got a bit of screen capture I'm going to show you. So uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. And I uh, hope this is helpful. If you have another use for your one, please let me know. Um, most of this should apply to any Wacom tablet. Um, some of them, the buttons are here along the side. Um, shouldn't matter, you're just gonna hold it differently. And yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so first things first is the main thing I would say that made me use this more often is just remapping the, so imagine this is your whole screen, okay? So if you had to move your mouse from there to there, that would be the whole screen. That's how you get it, okay? And then if you have two monitors plugged in, it's basically gonna, it's gonna try and map half the screen to there and then the other screen on the other side, which is, it's really hard to use. So when you get it in your software, so we're gonna jump over to my screen capture and I wanna show you how to do this. Um, you change the settings, you can do it per app basis or you can do it for, um, for, for everything in general. So we are going to remap this and then you'll see how that works. Okay, so we're gonna remap it so that basically, go and focus. So basically we're going to remap it so that this side is the left of this. This is the one side of the screen and this is the other side of the screen. So that's all we're gonna use, this little piece. Okay, so. Let's jump right into that. So remapping your Waco is very important. This big surface like this is very hard for you to retouch with um, easily. This is good for people who sketch that need like long curves and stuff. So I wouldn't care too much about this. You can see that small space there, that's what I use. Um, and you can see if, if I'm on, on this one, so this is the left side of my screen. Can't go anymore, you see, it doesn't do anything. Uh, left side of the screen, right side of the screen is about there okay and then it cuts over to my other screen so there's another screen there um, I've got two monitors but I've set the Wacom to only work on this screen so it never appears on that side um, if I want to go that way I use the mouse um, so to do this I do it in all others or in Photoshop I do it in maybe do it in both um, you pretty much just go to mapping oh let's start with this mapping 
um, then you choose your monitor one or two so yes monitor one um, if you leave it on full it's going to go to both monitors so the this space is going to have to cover the both monitors right so you put it on the monitor you usually use Photoshop on and then force proportions and then click this thing turn it to portion okay and then you can set where you want it so if you like so say if you're right-handed it's probably be easy on the other side but because I'm left hand I put on this side then my hand can rest on it instead of my hand being like off it and I'm trying to you know what I mean work on it my hand can be on it and I can work from here so um, this is the mapping for it if you if you want a bigger space you can make it like your own space so choose choose how much of your let's see over here how much of your tablet you want to use for the whole you know range okay so step number two is changing the pen uh, feel to firm if you if you leave it on the like soft version you click and the pressure is really sensitive so you're almost always getting a hard press if you change it to firm it takes a lot more pressure to um, activate a really like a full-on hard push so with the other Intuos Pros and things I think it's it's way more sensitive with these is less pressure involved so try and set it all the way to firm so that you can have a, a, a nice control of how thick and how thin your brush strokes are so that's two other tip I would say go to pen um, turn this tip feel to firm if you can see the pressure there if I click now it's I'm pushing very softly that's very softly a little bit hard it goes to maximum real easy I, it's barely even pressure right but if you put it on soft that I can just um, that I can just touch it like very softly and look how it's you can't even get softer pressure look so I would suggest turn this way to firm that way your pressure controls are a little bit uh, more forgiving so step number three would be um, finding a way to use these macro buttons it's up here um, the newer ones they're in a straight line up top here so it's same thing there's four buttons usually um, on the Intuos Pro it's on the side of there and it's a scroll wheel you could probably do even more stuff with a scroll wheel um, but for me we're going to talk about this one if I'm culling uh, like a dance event and there's like thousands of photos instead of me leaning over and clicking on my keyboard um, I set the I set this button to to next and previous and then I have a delete button and a OK button and then in Lightroom I have a quick selection button and then I have two forward and back buttons and I can kind of just sit there with it like this and lean back and kind of like take my time and almost like a, uh, like a controller just click next right next 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 next, next which works really really well um, I did capture this from the top so we're going to jump to that and I'll show you how to do it and to do it in the software of the computer okay we are in Lightroom so <clears throat> I'm just using these uh, images for uh, that we've given to clients um, if you were using these to cull I would sit like this and then um, I would use this top right or this top left to go for next or back um, a lot of wake up tablets have them on the side here so you could do the same thing you turn it this way and set them so it's like this and then what I would do is when I'm going through anything looking at what shots I want to select I'd go okay that's a good one and I push this button which I've set to B on the keyboard which is um, got to do a quick selection so I'm just going to go through them like this and go yes uh, yes 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 depends on which one you like and then from there once I've selected it just makes it much easier than sitting with two hands like this um, you just lean you can lean back and just take your time and just click like that yeah I'll just show it to you quick so these are all the finished edited photos that I've done for clients it just makes life a lot lot um, you know easier than doing it on there so I use the same feature when I do dance comps however I use a different program so I use fast stone but pretty much the same thing I, I have these on um, next and back and then sometimes I set this one to delete so if I want to delete I can push this button and hit this one for okay um, and then you can preset these things up in your way in your Wacom settings so when you're in here each program can have its own like shortcuts I don't use these for for anything except for when I'm culling I don't really use it for brushes and stuff I feel like it's a bit slow and then <clears throat> you can see which one I'm using it's kind of the the really cheap small one but yeah it's very it's a very simple effective trick 
on how to use your Wacom tablet for something other than actual retouching. Yeah. Uh, tip number four would be, I'd say, uh, I think some of the pro ones come with Wi-Fi modules built in. For this one, I had to buy one. So um, it's this little thing that pops out the back here. So I don't know if the camera will focus on this. So you see this little thing here? This plugs into the back of this, this thing. And then you have instant Wi-Fi available in the thing. When I'm at home, <coughs> When I'm at home, I don't use it as much. I just plug the cable in. It's just easier um, than trying to find a USB port to put the, the receiver in. Um, but I just leave it in here so it's charging all the time with the battery. And then it should come in a set where it's got a USB receiver, it's got the Wi-Fi module, and it's got the battery all in one package. Um, I leave it in here. It's charging all the time. So when I leave and I take my laptop, I don't have to try and bring the cable with. I just, I just take this, take the pen, take my wireless mouse and I go. I don't need to bother with extra cables, which is most of the time how I like to work with uh, my gear. I want it to be really quick and easy. So um, that's why I suggest really getting this Wi-Fi model. When you're sitting at a coffee shop, uh, it's really nice to just have this on the table and even leave your mouse at home because you've got a trackpad and your laptop. You've got two things. There's no wires, no way, except unless you're charging your uh, laptop. But um, yeah, definitely get that. So that's tip number four. Okay, and then last tip, is uh, more of a, just just a way for you to get used to this is um, I had my not this one but the bamboo one I had it in my cupboard for months because I struggled to draw with it I actually come from a drawing background and I'm quite I'm quite decent with a pencil so when I picked that up and I, sh I couldn't draw even simple stuff on the computer I just gave up and I was like I'm gonna stick with the mouse because I'm so used to the mouse with the shortcuts and then the one day I was like okay I'm gonna give it a month I'm gonna just use this to retouch for a month and then uh, I'm gonna not use the mouse and then uh, before that even, maybe a week and a half into it, I'm so used to this that there's no way I'm going to edit with the mouse again. The mouse is very, it feels very mechanical, you know, it doesn't feel very smooth and artistic. So when I'm retouching, especially things like dodging and burning, um, when I'm finalizing an image and I'm drawing on it, it's, it's very um, soothing to be able to just sit with a pencil and just scrape across the, the, the tablet, you know. Um, with a mouse, you basically have to let go, click, let go, click, let go, click. There's no like clicking action with a pen. You're just putting it down and you, it's very um, easy to get used to. So I highly suggest putting in some time, set yourself a goal. Even if you just do a week, say I'm going to do a full week with this, even if you don't come from a drawing background and um, just get used to using your one hand for drawing, your other hand for shortcuts and you'll see how much easier your work becomes. Um, look up some some like dodging and burning tutorials or some retouching stuff and see how they use it. Um, the other thing is I'm during lockdown, I'm doing a lot of live stream editing stuff where I'm editing other people's photos. So if you have a photo you want me to edit, please send it through to me. Um, you can get, you can get hold of me on Instagram or Facebook or something and just send me a message and then I'll give you an email address, send me the file. And then um, if you have a specific problem, skin issue or a background or something you want me to do, I'll play with it. If it's a photo in general, I'll just play with it. Um, I'd love to have you guys come through during the live stream, chat to me, let me know what you want me to fix or try or um, elaborate on. So I hope, I hope I see you guys in the tutorial. If you want to know more info about this or where you can get one, if you're in South Africa, I can um, advise you. Otherwise, Amazon or, or your local camera shop should have one. And uh, yeah, that's about it for my five tips on using this thing. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video. More, most of the time I do behind the scenes with models and dancers and stuff. But obviously because we're locked in the house we don't have a lot of that stuff so you're gonna get a bunch of this stuff and then the live stream is really fun for me to just sit and chat nonsense with the people in the chat room and if you haven't by now during this video liked and subscribed please do that and click the little bell thing um it will notify you when i put up a new video and yeah all the comments and likes it really helps the video a lot so um i appreciate the effort and i'll see you guys on the next one